What is your love language? What is your I love would language? say, somebody asked me the other day, um, I would say mine is acts of service. I feel like I'm a doer, so I feel so like, like I'm if, doing something if for someone you. Um, like cooked for you or... Oh, you mean what do I like as yeah, a... Oh, yeah. You mean, well, I, I would say for me, it's um, me being a man, I guess it's words of affirmation and physical touch. Oh, you know, we okay. like, you know, we like, we have, men, we have egos, so we like to hear we doing, we like doing our part. Like to hear you good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you say we cutting the grass good, then we're going to make it look like a golf course the next time we cut the grass. <laughs> okay, that's you know. nice to know. I'm glad to know that. That's that, that's going to help me in my you marriage. Look free. at you, dropping you jewels it. up in here. We love it. What is your wife's love language? Um, I would say time. Mm. Um, spending time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, because you're a pretty busy actor and singer, mm -hmm. so do you get to give her a lot of time? I think so. I mean, you know, I guess it might be more a question for her, but I, I think I do a pretty good job of it. I mean, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's kind of new, actually. Being, yeah, I was going to say, this whole married. marriage thing is new. Yeah. So how long have you been married? Uh, well, it's only been about uh, seven months. Seven months. Seven and months. <laughs> You have a baby on the way. I do. Who told you that? I, I saw it. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. So it's kind of like wham, wham. Yeah. But we've been together for a long time, uh -huh. for, for a few years now. So it's, So for all the women who've uh -huh. been with a guy, when you say you've been together for a long time, what's a long time? Five years? A little longer. Ten? No. Like right in between, Eight. like seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. So for those women, Keith, right. who are waiting patiently. Right. And they've been with a man for five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. What is it that they need to do to have the man finalize that thing like you did? You know, I, I don't know if it's anything uh, that they can do as far as them finalizing. I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. But uh -huh. I, I, always, I think a man knows when he knows and he's not ready until he's ready. So I feel like you kind of have to be as patient as possible but and kind of weigh between patience and when it's time to... Yeah, patience of seven time. years, that's, a, that's patience. That's, 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 that's the patience of Job. <laughs> <laughs> I think for us, though, we were both kind of very career-oriented, very focused on our lives, and uh -huh. it, was, it was good. So it was kind of a thing where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it was a seamless, organic transformation. Okay. So, so it was kind of, how did you propose, or was it like, you want to go on and do this now? I went old-fashioned. <laughs> I, I kind of went to, I took, uh, I, I, I hollered at her pops. Yeah, oh, that yeah, is old yeah. fashioned. I'm, I'm a country boy. Because see, so most of us don't even have daddies to holler at these days. Yeah. Was that a bad thing to say? Ooh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ooh. black men. I'm sorry, black men. I didn't mean that. That was just jokes. Yeah. Okay. So you you hollered at her pops. Yeah. And it, then uh, that was it. And then he uh, he said, "Cool." He said, "When?" I said, "Now." And then we just uh, he did he drove me to the house. Cause she was at she was at their house so. Oh, he drove you. Well, he fo I followed him. So when you when he said when you meant now literally. Yeah. Oh, so you asked him right when you wanted to do it, not yeah. a couple of days before or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, right when I want to do it. Oh wow, that's so kind of how I do it. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. If I'm not, I'm not. So. Oh okay. Let me As do it. Let me do it while I got the you know. <laughs> I got the goons to go do it. Let's go do it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry up. Give me that. Give me that. Hit, hit, hit that pedal, <laughs> pops. <laughs> um, I remember having a conversation, we were at a party, and I don't uh -oh. even know, I think it was a Halloween party. I don't even, I don't remember. Okay. It was some party, and we sat in the corner and talked for a very long time. You may not remember it, but I remember it because you're Keith Robinson. Okay. So, <laughs> so I just thought it was the most generous conversation ever in terms of you just having the nicety to sit down and have a conversation with me. And what you talked about, what I remember specifically, yeah. was about you talking about being the Green Power Ranger and your journey. Really? Yeah, you talked about your journey. Did y'all know he was a Power Ranger? No. <laughs> I must have had a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> you talk about Power Rangers at the party. But, but it was a story. Like, it yeah. was, you were telling me I guess what your journey was mm -hmm. to where you were at that moment in time. Yeah. And I found the journey about the Power mm -hmm. Ranger story pretty fascinating. Yeah. And that's kind of what I like to talk about on this show. I like to mm -hmm. talk about people's journeys because every one of them is different. Yeah. And people get discouraged, mm -hmm. people get impatient, mm -hmm. and people lose sight of their dreams because it's not going necessarily how they want it to go. Right, right. And that, when, they, when I found out you were gonna be on, that's the first thing that came to my mind was that Power Ranger story because it was something about you weren't even supposed to do it or your agent, had, it was something yeah. crazy surrounding that story. Um, 
Power Rangers because that was actually my first job ever in Hollywood. That was a thing where, because um, I moved out to, to L.A. as a musician. I was in a group. We had a deal with a record label. We got out of the deal. We moved out here kind of on a whim. We were kind of living from hotel to hotel. And I had met this young lady who was a, an actress. I actually met her in Atlanta. And then she said she lived out there. And I said, well, I, I was just kind of really just trying to reach out to people that I knew once we got to the area because I didn't know it. We didn't know anybody but each other. So I, she, I went to an acting class with her, and um, there weren't enough readers. And the teacher told me to read, and I got up and read a scene, and she thought I was really good. And then she called me back probably about maybe, maybe three weeks later and told me to go read for this Power Ranger role, which <clears throat> I had no idea what it was. I didn't know what a headshot was. I, was, I wasn't even out here to, to act. Right, one. you I were out to, here to sing. Right, I wanted to re-sign, and I told my girl at the time, I'm, we're going to get a new deal, and I'll be back home. Just give me a year. You know, That was 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> And long story short, I went into this audition. I didn't have a headshot. Um, I didn't know what a headshot was, so they told me to come back. But they liked my charisma. They're like, I guess they could feel that I really was just myself because I didn't mm -hmm. know the way to be. And I, I went to Kinko's. Well, I got a disposable camera. Remember disposable cameras? I, I think I remember what they are. Me and my other guy in my group, we shot all the pictures out in this disposable camera. Uh -huh. It's like in front of the building, like this. And like, ah. <laughs> you know, and then uh, I, I took the one-hour one hour photo, developed one of the pictures, came back in with it on Kinko's. They fell out laughing, and you know, after four or five auditions, they were like, you know, you little you little thick for the tights. We might need you to lose some weight. I guess I was feeling like maybe they're gonna give me the job. So, I, I drank um, two gallons of water, a gallon of water a day, and I just got on those McDonald's salad shakers. Just salad. <laughs> maybe those are um, salad wait. shakers. It's a true you, story. I don't even think they sell the they salad shakers anymore. anymore. Right. That's all I ate. My roommates thought I was sick. They was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I'm just kind of lean out for this, for this role or whatever. They're like, ah, whatever, whatever. So I went in, and um, I got the role. And I called my parents from a pay phone because we did not have a phone yet in our house. Uh -huh. And I told them, turn on the TV Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. It was like, all right. And there I was, flying a plane, beating up aliens. <laughs> Fox. <laughs> That's pretty much how I started. Yeah. That is a wow. Yeah, it was a blessing, man. It was like out of nowhere. Just boom. Just boom, yeah. That brings me to another part of your journey because you did move to L.A. to become a singer. Right. And then the trajectory kind of changed mm -hmm. and you became an actor starting right. with Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about when there's something in your heart and your gut that you want to do so badly and that you dream of, but then there's some other force Mm -hmm. that is moving you in a different direction. Right. Well, I think, I think you have to go with that. You can't, you, you can't uh, fight against that wave. You have to ride that wave. And, and uh, I think, you know, the saying, you know, you tell God your plans and he laughs. Yeah. And I think uh, for me, uh, it kind of expanded my horizons when I got here and I, and I began to act. Because I never, never saw myself in movies or TV. I just wanted to make a record with my boys and hear my song on the radio. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing to do is to not fight it. And if you, if you still have, if it's, if it's happening the way it's happening, it's a reason. And if you still have that fire and desire to do something that you have a, a passion for, there's a reason for that as well. So I feel like you should pursue uh, whatever it is any and every uh, with all because the Because you're still, yeah. you're singing now, but you're yeah. still acting. You're yeah. saints and sinners. I do both, and they kind of balance yeah. me, you know what I mean? Because if I'm, if I'm not working on a set, then I'm using the studio <laughs> writing songs. If I'm on a set and I'm, songs come to me, so I, they kind of, they've always fed me my whole career because right. I feel like it's kind of like a SUV and a sports car. Yeah. We're headed in the same direction, just in a, in a different vehicle, so it's just really expanded my horizon as far as being able to create in a different Does way. one get jealous of the other? Like, it, because your acting career is, mm -hmm. uh, people know you more for that right. than for your singing career. Um, are you a little bitter or jealous at the fact that the acting took over the singing? I'm not bitter or jealous. Uh, I think that's. I, I think it's a blessing. But I think it took me some time to evolve because I think right after, say, like Dreamgirls, which was um, that came out in '06, which is almost. 13, 14 years ago. It's been a minute, yeah. And we performed at the Oscars, and you know, I'm on stage with Beyonce. And well, and you were nominated. Well, your well, song, song was, was yeah. nominated yeah. for an Oscar. The song right. "Patience" right. was nominated for an right. Oscar, and Keith wrote that song. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't actually write. It. I didn't write. It. I performed it. Okay. Yeah, because that was one of the new songs that uh, Saidi Garrett and another gentleman, forgive me, uh, wrote that song and "Love You I Do." Um, but I was the lead on on the record. But I felt like after that. 
being on a stage with a billion people that the music, the doors would swing completely open and everyone would know. And I found that a lot of people thought that I was lip syncing in Dreamgirls. And I was like, what? So for wow. years I was just in shock, like, what? How could I stand beside Beyonce and Jennifer Hudson and Jamie Foxx and be lip syncing? <laughs> and be lip syncing. So yeah. it was still, I think that it got me in the door, but mm -hmm. you still have to cut your chops and still have to grind it, you know, the same way. I just think it's a, the acting has afforded me opportunities, you know, like this one to, to come here because, and, and do my music. So it's kind of been a, a blessing. Uh, yeah, when I way. see your song on, um, I, watch, I listen to a lot of XM. Okay. And I see your song playing on XM, I snap it and then I... Yeah. So I shoot you a little thing on the Twitter or the thing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm listening yeah, yeah, to Key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, but you also do something else with music. Mm -hmm. You are now writing music for different television shows, yeah. movies, and that type of thing. You have a yeah. whole company that yeah. does that? Yeah. My, myself and Lenny Bunn, because we've always, I've always, whatever project that I was on, I would always harass the music supervisor to get a song in, like a Fat Albert or... I did something for Blade Three. So you have a you actually have a song that was on the Fat Albert soundtrack as yeah, well in the score, because yeah. you were acting. Yeah. In Fat Albert, right. and so you have a song on the score. Right. Wow. Right, right, right. And Blade Three and other TV shows. Thanks. Um, <laughs> the show that I'm on now, I, I um, contribute a lot of the music there, and we've actually done entire movies. A movie called Divorce Invitation, and uh, it's been a, it's been a few projects. So whenever whenever there's a music element. I'm always at lunchtime somewhere around a music supervisor. There you go. Oh, can I get records. one in? Yeah. Right. I have a, I have another movie coming out in, Mar on, in March called um, Open. And you for, produce, direct? That's that's another. That's a. That's a different project. See, you got too many projects. No, this, I came with you. This okay. is actually a movie myself <laughs> and Essence Atkins. Um, okay. Who you know, uh, we we first worked together in half and half years ago. Yeah. And I put some songs on there. So I'm always. It's been a great thing because I've always been able to kind of facilitate my music and, and slide it in and and kind of work both angles. So talk about the project I was, I jumped the gun and talked about. Yeah, the, the Greener Grass Experiment. Um, that's a project that I wrote and directed and starred in. It's kind of my first, my baby that allowed me to kind of marry both, both the, both. The music and uh, the acting. Yeah, both the crafts. And I've, I've been working on it for about, I tell people it's been taking about a year, year and a half. It was a 12 day shoot that took about a year, year and a half, you know. A 12 day shoot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took about a year, year and yeah, a half. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know, but but it's, been, it's been a great project. It's kind of a romantic thriller. And uh, we're, we're coming down the home stretch right now. I'm excited about it. So this will be the first time you can kind of see both sides of me. You and I have worked with someone together. I don't think we've worked together, but Don B. Welch we have in yeah. common because you've done his projects yep. before. Yep. I've done his projects before. So you also do stage plays every mm -hmm. now and again. Every now and again, yeah. What is it about the theater that you like? I think the immediate, I think just having that interaction with the audience. Mm -hmm. Immediate payoff. It's like you know, if it, the, you can, the emotion is evoked. You're kind of feeding off the audience. The audience is feeding off of you, and it's like really being in your craft. And you, you can't. There's no place to hide. No. So I think if you can really master the stage, you can definitely master the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you're here and that you're mastering be, both yeah. of them: I'm the trying. stage, the camera, and the microphone with your music. I'm trying. I'm trying. And during lunch, I'm going to be whispering in your ear going, if you've got one of them projects, you know you can sure. slide me in. I you know you, what I'm saying? I'm not a singer, but I can yeah. act my ass off. I, I already know. <laughs> I already know. So what else can we expect from you this year? Um, well, I think um, next month we start back for season five of uh, Saints and Sinners. All right, good. Which, which we're excited about. Um, and I'm, I'm working on my second album, Love Episodic 2. That was one of the singles, Love Language. Love, so, e Love Episodic 2 is the next album. Yeah, make sure you yeah. download that joint. Yeah. Or download Love Episodic 1, which is already out. <laughs> okay, you okay. Know, and then this song, Love Language, is out as well. Uh, show tip, I think uh, next Friday, for Valentine's Day, if you're not doing it, if you're in Los Angeles, come to the Sophie Tale. The Sophie Tale? Sophie Tale, right on Los Angeles. Valentine's Day show? Valentine's Day show, yeah. You Myself and Kevin Nash is a special guest, too. Really? Perform as well, yeah. Well, I think I will be there. I, I would love to come. Wait, it's, when is Valentine's? When is the 14th? Is Friday. That, that's a Friday. Y'all yeah. go. I'm, I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be sitting right here. Well, when you get out of here, you can just shoot on down around the okay. corner. Okay. Can you get me on, on a list? Of course. Okay. Of course. Let's get you <laughs> a nice little seat right down front. Yeah, that's next Friday. Okay, I'll be yeah. there. Okay. Especially if you and Kevin Nash are going to be there. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm coming through. I'm coming through for Valentine's Day. Hey, my man, Day. Francois Dean, to be in the building. Hey, Francois. Thank you for that beautiful music that you were playing. Y'all give it up for the amazing Keith Robinson. Oh, yeah.